Baylor football has wrapped up its spring practice session and the Bears are looking to get back in the Big 12 title hunt. Today, we'll sit down with players and coaches from both sides of the ball, break down current depth charts, hear analysis from a media roundtable, and see how the team continued its presence at the NFL Draft. This and more on the Baylor Bears football preview. Welcome to the Baylor Bears football preview. I'm Ashton Warren for Baylor Vision, and I'll be taking you through the show with a little help from Voice of the Bears, John Morris. Last year, Baylor finished with their 10th victory and a championship against UNC in the Russell Athletic Bowl. For the third straight season, Baylor also finished number one in total offense and scoring. However, Baylor is only bringing back five of those offensive starters, but get a big help from returning injured quarterbacks Seth Russell and Jarrett Sidham. John Morris takes a look at how the offense fared this spring. You had uh, a lot that I'm thinking you had a lot you wanted to get done in the spring. Do you feel like you got everything done? Well, no, we didn't. You know, we knew Seth was coming back and, uh, you know, we got to go for about half the practices and then he had a little pec injury that, you know, held him out about the last two weeks of spring ball. But he's an old dog, you know, I mean, he's been around. He's just fifth year, so he's, he knows how to get ready. He knows how to prepare and he'll know how to perform. How about uh, for you, it had to be an interesting spring to, after the injury, the surgery, to get back out there in the spring, what was that like for you? I know it was exciting. Um, you know, there's some things that you know that I had to work on. Um, you know, I didn't get to fully go through it all. Uh, you know, just for cautionary reasons and stuff like that. I didn't want to push it too much, um, too early. Uh, you know, they kept telling me I don't want to, don't want to go out there too quick. You know, you're not. It doesn't mean anything right now. Um, you know, it's just a spring. You know, you have, you know, a few more months till the season, and uh, and then you can you can get ready during the summer and be ready for uh, the first game. When Russell returns, he'll have one of the greatest weapons in college football, All-American junior K.D. Cannon, who in his first two years has amassed more than 100 receptions, nearly 2,000 yards receiving, and 14 touchdowns. But the Baylor offense has always been about having more than one receiving threat. That's still a really deep group and really talented group. It is, and um, you know we talked about some lack of inexperience, and that's one of the position groups that we have it in. Um, but I don't think we're short of talent. Ishmael Zamora really had a productive spring from practice one to 15. Was one of those guys that we felt like needed to progress, and he did do that. Um, and then there's a host of all other guys that really did a great job. You know, Chris Platt, Quan Jones, Blake Lynch. So we feel. Devontae Strickland. You know, we feel like we got a lot of really good guys that I think it all, all, all of them will play. Got uh, Corey's gone, uh, Jay Lee is gone, but you got a good group of receivers back. You got playmakers all around you. No, it's and that's the thing with you know wide receiver you. I mean, that's that's who we are, and you know they do a great job. Coach Tate and KB and everybody they do a great job of bringing those guys in, and so it's it makes our jobs as quarterbacks a whole lot easier. Uh, you know, to get the ball out in space to those guys. If there is anything the nation learned about Baylor last year, it's that the Bears can run the ball too. Returning 1,000-yard rushers Chuck Linwood and Johnny Jefferson helped the Bears amass 326 rushing yards a game, tops of all Power 5 teams. However, entering 2016, they'll be behind a new-look offensive line. Wholesale changes there. Kyle Fuller's the only guy back. How do you think the progress was in the spring for identifying, you know, your best guys there? You know, Coach Clements is really good at what he does, coaching those guys. And, and actually, we, we staff met this morning, and he was talking about it, just how excited he is about the talent in that room. So we feel like, you know, we're going to play a lot more guys. You know, we've talked about it as an offense of, you know, we play anywhere from 20 to 30 more snaps than anybody else in the country on average. And uh, to be able to, to rotate guys in and have a, a good pool of depth that guys can rest each other, we feel like that can help us. What do you think coming out of spring, the, the entire offense, the offensive side, uh, did you guys get accomplished what you needed to? Oh, not everything that we wanted to. Um, I mean, that's, that's always an occasion in spring, you know, what, what happens. You know, we want to you want to be at the high level that we were last year, but you know that's what that's what film is for us, what uh, summer's for, and, and fall camp, and then we're gonna, you know, make sure and get everything meshed so we can get out there and play the ball that we know how to play. You feel so the spring you had a lot of work to do. Did you feel like you got it done well enough that you're comfortable now going into the summer? You're never comfortable. Uh, you're never comfortable, but we do feel like we got a lot better, and that's the main thing that you want to do in the spring. And is we 
we were a little green and um, felt like that those guys that we needed to progress did progress. And the one thing you know, John, being out there is we get a ton of reps. And so those guys are going to get a lot of work. And, um, you know, they're back going to work tomorrow with Kaz. And so we're keeping them really, really busy. They'll get some time off in May. But uh, when we get back in June, those guys will be grinding. The post-spring depth chart has a lot of positions still to be won. Neither quarterback, running back, inside receiver, nor tight end have a clear-cut starter. The offensive line looks to have four new starters, led by Kyle Fuller, who has accumulated 26 starts since his sophomore season. The 2016 season will be a Texas affair, as Baylor will only be leaving the Lone Star State three times. Kicking off the non-conference schedule, the Bears play Northwestern State, SMU, and Rice. Teams Baylor is 9-0 against playing under head coach Art Bryles. Oklahoma State kicks off conference play on September 24th, followed by Iowa State and Kansas. The second half of the schedule has the Bears playing Texas down in Austin, followed by TCU and Oklahoma. Baylor's last home game will be November 19th against Kansas State, then the Texas Farm Bureau Insurance Shootout against Tech in Arlington. And the regular season will wrap up in Morgantown against West Virginia. After the break, we'll be sitting down with a media roundtable to recap the spring and hear from defensive players and coaches on steps they took to improve for 2016. It's not always next man up, it's next best man up. Phil Bennett is in his sixth year as defensive coordinator at Baylor and has spent nearly the past four decades in coaching. During that time, he hasn't allowed himself to become complacent as he talks with John Morris about changes he's made to his defense. You showed some 3-4 in the, in, the, in the spring, you've worked in that. What's your th thought process as far as how do you mix that in? Do you go primarily 3-4 or what do you think? Well, you, you know, people have always asked me, you know, well, you've been a 4-3. You know, the truth of the matter is I've always been a guy, I'm going to find a way to get my best players on the field. And this spring, it was, it was, it was playing a 3-4. I see us playing three nose guards, three, uh, three sets of defensive ends. Um, when we go to our four-man, you know, I see us too deep. Um, I, I think when, you, when we play as many possessions as we play on defense, because we're so fast on offense, score so well, uh, we got to play guys. That was one of the uh, really the key stories coming into this or, or in the spring was throwing more of that three four out there. You feel like you guys picked it up well, you know, and, and we'll take that into the fall camp. Yeah, I think we did. Um, before we kind of just used it just a little bit, and then last season it kind of came on with injuries and all. But uh, you know, this spring I think guys kind of figured, you know, everybody got into it and uh, figured it all out. And I think going to the fall is going to be a big thing that's going to help us in a lot of games. All four starters from the defensive line are gone, yet those that are looking to fill the spots have plenty of playing experience from the past few years. Defensively up front, um, you know, had some guys make some moves. Jeremy Falk came in, JC guy really flashed for us, did a good job. You know, and, um, you know, we're a little more three-man, four-man, we we'll switch around a little bit, but, you know, mixing those guys in, Coach Bennett's staff did a great job this spring of, you know, really, I think, putting our guys in positions of success, you know, you know, kind of changing schematically to our personnel. And, you know, Ryan Stewart had a really good spring, Ryan Reed. So we got some guys, Avion Edwards, that were better in place. I'm excited about, you know, the guys we're putting on the field. Taylor Young had a great spring. You're going to have some new guys up there. Tell us about the ones that, that are stepping up now. Oh, yeah, like I have Brian Nance. You know, he's a great, you know, he's a great leader. He's very elusive. You know, he brings a different type of technique. And then you have KJ, you know, he's a solid player. He's been playing since he was a freshman. I mean, he's strong, strong as an ox. And then, of course, we got Byron and all the young guys. I mean, like, I feel comfortable with everybody out there, so it's a, it's a great deal. The secondary brings back senior leader Orion Stewart and safety Chance Waz, having lost Xavier Howard to the draft. A healthy Ryan Reed will need to step up into the number one cornerback role. Nice to uh, finally be healthy, to play a season healthy for you, wasn't it? Sir, yes, sir. It felt good. I could move around, you know. Well, the only thing that's bad about it is after the games, you, <laughs> your body starts to ache. You, uh, where I had surgery and all that, you know, it starts to mess with me. But that's why we have the cold tub <laughs> and recovery sessions. So it's, it was, it's all good. X is gone, left early. Uh, what do things look like coming out of spring in the secondary? Oh, man, they look good. I mean, they they look like some, everybody looked like 
they ready to step up. They're ready to step up. So I feel like we have great competition, which is going to make each player better. So I feel like it's going to be a good fall camp and a good summer. The linebackers will be led by All-American junior Taylor Young, a player who has seen significant playing time since his redshirt freshman year. And how does that help going through that learning experience coming into this year? I mean, you know, it's just adversity. Adversity causes some to break and some to break records. So, I mean, like, that's just how I'm going into this season. Like, you know, we dealt with the adversity. And, like, you know, and now it's just time to just, and then now it's just time to embrace it and just come on and just come as a whole. Good. I like that. Is that a Browseism or is that a Taylor Youngism? You know, I read. That's a good one, man. I like that. <laughs> With the 15 spring practices over, Coach Bennett expresses what he saw out of his defense this spring. It's not always next man up. It's next best man up. And, and you, you, you got to let them understand that. I mean, playing at this level in this league, there's an expectation. And, and uh, you know, the thing we're looking for is, is consistency and production. And um, I, I thought at the end of spring that we'd made uh, good improvement. Uh, I like, you know, our young guys. I think that uh, they're hungry to play. They're hungry to prove themselves. Um, and as I told you earlier, it wasn't much drama, just a lot of work. And here is that new look defensive line. Brian Nance and K.J. Smith hold the outside of the line, and junior college transfer Jeremy Falk and senior Byron Bonds are on the inside. Avion Edwards and Raquan Davis are fighting for that middle linebacker spot between Taylor Young and last year's breakout defensive playmaker Trayvon Blanchard. Opposite of Ryan Reed is redshirt freshman Jameson Houston, and Chance Waz and Tayon Sells are battling it out to join Orion Stewart in the safety positions. 2016 marked the eighth straight year Baylor Bear was picked in the NFL draft. We'll take a closer look at the players selected, as well as hear analysis on how the Bears developed this spring. It's hard to believe to say this, but you may be faster out there next year than you are this year, even with Corey Coleman gone. We lose one, two or three come in, so I think you'll see outstanding play out there again this year. Welcome back on the Baylor Bears football preview. John Morris from the bank, the Beecham Athletic and Nutrition Center, one of the great new facilities here for Baylor Athletics. Joined by Elliot Coffey, Baylor former linebacker. Ricky Thompson, former Baylor receiver, part of our Baylor IMG Sports Network radio crew. And Jerry Hill from the Baylor Bear Foundation, the Baylor Bear Insider. All right, let's just kind of wrap up certain positions, spring overall. Jerry, let me start with you. Uh, at the far end, we saw uh, both Seth Russell and Jarrett Stidham come back yep. and seemed to perform well, except for the uh, pectoral muscle pull for Seth Russell. Yeah, it was kind of a shame that Seth wasn't able to go through the whole spring. He had the pectoral muscle strain, and, and, and that was really just in his first week back. So he really didn't get a lot of time in there. But you kind of know what Seth can do. So if you were going to have one that didn't go through everything, I think it was good that it was Seth. Jared got a lot of time in there. Zach Smith got a lot of time and you can you know better see what those guys were able to do and I think it'll help both of them be more ready for this next season. Ricky Thompson I know you got to see some of the practices in the spring no Corey Coleman who left early for the draft no Jay Lee but still a, uh, a a plethora of talent at receiver for the Bears. Really is and it's hard to believe that you, to say this but you may be faster out there next year <laughs> than you are this year even with Corey Coleman gone but you've got uh, the freshman coming in Devin DuVernay that's world-class speed, uh, Trendavian Dixon, who is already here. And then you've got Katie Cannon coming back, uh, Chris Platt, who can fly, Lynx Hawthorne in the middle, Ishmael Zamora outside. This kid's, what, 6'3", 6'4", 220, and can run. I would hate to be one of these 5'10 cornerbacks out there trying to cover him. But a receiver never seems to be a problem. Uh, we lose one, two or three come in. So I think you'll see outstanding play out there again this year. Yeah, pretty good depth at receiver for the Bears. I don't think Coach Browse is ever going to be caught short on uh, skill position players for sure. Elliot, uh, let's switch over to the defensive side. The linebackers uh, centered around Taylor Young, who is back. There's some really good linebackers there filling those spots. Right, and I think the surprising thing 
is that we've seen Taylor stay outside. I know he's not a big guy, but with his leadership abilities and his playmaking abilities, I kind of saw him scoot inside. But what that does is that leaves an opportunity for Avion Edwards and Raekwon Davis right now, which is the big competition that we're seeing. And Avion, we were talking about it earlier, we're kind of waiting to see him really make that final push, become that complete player that we know he can be. I think how he finished off the season with 17 tackles makes us believe that he has the capacity to do it and he could potentially make it happen. But with Raekwon, man, that guy is 6'2", 230. He looks the part. He moves incredibly well. I think he doesn't have the polish yet that we're looking for, but he definitely has the capability to move out there and be that, that prototypical linebacker that we haven't really seen the position. Good. Trayvon Blanchard is back, and he's very good in that bear position, that nickelback position. We saw in the spring also Baylor uh, tool with uh, a 3-4 look as compared to the uh, previous and the most prevalent 4-3 look. What do you think that does? What are the options that provides? Well, I think it's funny seeing uh, Patrick Levels out there lining up instead of Trayvon Blanchard because <laughs> he's just a smaller guy. But what that does is that puts more speed on the field, especially when you're looking at these third and long situations that we so often see ourselves in. It gives us a chance to get more speed get pressure on the quarterback and try to force that ball out of the hands quick and I think we'll talk about uh, you know the secondary more in, in depth later but that really has the potential to be uh, a really a, a great part of that defense and one that can make a ton of tour turnovers. Good. Ricky to the uh, to the lines both the offensive and the defensive lines there's got to be a lot of new starters compared to the last couple of years. Well, there is, but I, you see this, and you have all these guys that really played last year. You you had a lot of mixing in and out on both defense and offensive lines, and I think that makes you feel pretty good about it. But I think the fact that you come through spring and there's not a whole lot of talk about either side means I think they think they're in pretty good shape. <laughs> uh, if there were a problem, you would hear about it. And I think really they plugged in well, and this offensive line is huge again. Uh, it looks like to me that they move very well. Luckily, you'll have two or three games up front early in the schedule where they can get ready and get prepared. But I'm going to be very surprised if they're not awfully good. Same way on the defensive side. You've had most of these guys that have played a lot of football and have been around. And I think as far as mobility, I think you'll have more mobility over there this year than you've seen in the past. And part of the thing that we were talking about just now is the mobility on the defensive side is so much more important now mm -hmm. than it was in years past with these offenses and third and longs and the way they throw the ball. It's similar to the old nickel defense used mm -hmm. to run in the NFL. I think you'll see a lot more speed on the field these days, and the Bears should have it on both sides. Jerry, how about the uh, secondary for the Bears? Some familiar faces back there, but some new faces as well. Yeah, you had the potential to, for the whole secondary to return intact. Uh, uh, Xavier Howard obviously went to the NFL draft, but uh, had the rest of the guys back. Ryan Reed at the other cornerback, and then with Orion Stewart and Chance Waz back at safety. Um, so it left a cornerback position open, and, and there were a lot of guys in line. One that maybe you didn't see coming out of the pack was Jamison Houston, a redshirt freshman, or at that time a true freshman, and he really impressed him in the spring with what he did. He's a playmaker type, a bigger guy like Xavier Howard, so I think that was a great addition to the secondary. And then you've got Davion Hall switching from receiver over to safety, and what I saw from him was a playmaker as well, a guy that can, a bigger guy that can hit, but he can also cover receivers great. He made some big time plays back there, so I think he's a guy that could, that could have an impact this year. Guys, thanks very much. Appreciate your expertise. We all feel good about Baylor coming out of the spring, right? Oh, yeah. Heading into summer and then into the fall right after that. Appreciate Jerry Hill, Ricky Thompson, and Elliot Coffey. And stay with us when we come back. Some of the names that we did not mention back with the team in the spring. Well, that's because they're headed into the NFL draft. We'll take a look at Baylor in the NFL draft when we come back. Stay with us. This is the Baylor Bear football special on Fox. No, I'm excited. We won the red carpet. You know, it's a big event. You know, it's finally here. It's been a long time coming. I'm really just excited to spend the time with my beautiful mom and just to be here. You know, it's great for our players uh, to fulfill dreams. You know, it's like one of my hashtags today has been dreams caught. You know, I mean, you always talk about chasing your dream, you know, trying to catch it. Well, we're going to have some that, that caught the dream this week. It was another busy draft for the Baylor Bears, as six players now have the opportunity to make an NFL roster. Corey Coleman attended the draft in Chicago, and we were there to see his behind-the-scenes trick. I 
I'm excited. We won the red carpet. You know, it's a big event. You know, it's finally here. It's been a long time coming. I'm really just excited to spend the time with my beautiful mom and just to be here. You know, it's great for our players uh, to fulfill dreams. You know, it's like one of my hashtags today has been dreams caught. You know, I mean, you always talk about chasing your dream, you know, trying to catch it. Well, we're going to have something that, that caught the dream this week. All the scouts and coaches who watched you felt uh, great about you, can hear, about, hear you right now. So we're tremendously excited. We're going to pick you here, add you to our team. You ready to run by some people and catch some touchdowns? Yes, sir. With the 15th pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Corey Coleman, wide receiver, Baylor. I'm playing with some guy named Robert Griffin III. I think I know him yeah. from somewhere. Yeah, right? You guys <laughs> maybe have a little connection there? Right, you know, I'm excited to play for Robert, you know, he was at Baylor, um, he's a legend there, he's a great quarterback and he's a great person. And, you know, I'm just honored and blessed to um, get called by Cleveland at 15 too, that's big time. Boom! So happy, you know, Baylor Relation. Thank y'all for all y'all support through um, really, you know, college. And I know y'all are going to keep y'all support um, through my NFL journey. I just really appreciate y'all and Sickle Bears. As you can see, plenty of Baylor Bears were taken throughout the draft. And standout men's basketball player Rico Gathers has a chance at continuing his NFL dream. This was the sixth time in seven years that multiple Baylor players were taken in the NFL draft. That does it for all of us here at Baylor Vision. Thanks for joining us on Fox Sports, and we'll see you at McLean Stadium here in Waco on September 3rd.